Jim Jordan, down here in Urbana. Well, just outside. Jim, how's it going today, man? Good, real good. Where are you heading in an hour? I gotta jump on a plane, uh, head to the airport, jump on a plane, head back to Washington. So but it's nice to stop in and watch a little practice every once in a while. See Zeke, who's working at camp here. Okay, Zeke actually was a freshman this year at Graham. Yeah. They had seven champs. He wasn't one of the champs. What, what was your advice to him to, to get up on top of that podium? Well, he worked hard. He had a good year. Just you know, unfortunately, couldn't be Ty Mitch. Um, and it's you know, when you're a freshman, a lot of times in Ohio, you're going to have a state champ in your weight class, and that's what he had, and just couldn't beat him in the uh, couldn't beat him in the semis. You gotta give Ty credit. He was a really tough match. Took Zeke down like three times in 30 seconds. And um, if I had to, if we had to do over again, we might have had Zeke do a little different style, but. You know, he wrestled a good year and beat the beat the tar out of everybody else. So we were we were pleased with the season. And of course, we we're pumped for Jeff's team. They set the record, seven champs, most points. It was a, it was a fun year. Okay, Ben, uh, UW Madison, your alma mater, where you won two NCAA yeah. titles. Pretty excited about that. And how did you feel the season went for him? Well, he had a tough year. You know, the, I mean, the good news is he loves it there. Coach Davis and, and Coach Pritzloff and, and all his uh, team. He, he fits in there. He likes it. Likes his teammates. Likes everything about it. Um, but had a long year. He made varsity and wrestled varsity all year, but unfortunately had a losing record. Um, but won some Big Ten matches. Uh, and, and, you know, the, I think the good thing is he's going to redshirt, and they're going to move him to 74, which I think makes sense. One of the things I think hurt him is he was pulling a lot of weight. It's just, for us Jordans, he's tall. He's almost six foot tall. And um, to make 157 got to be, got to be hard. And so uh, it's a different thing in college now. Back, way back in the old days when I wrestled, you can cut more weight, but you wait in five hours before for a dual meet. You wait in the night before for um, the big tournaments. They, they, this one hour thing. And so he was he was getting used to that. And I think it's going to be better with him just getting bigger, stronger, and not having to pull the weight and wrestle 174 in two years. Do you think that's changed the whole college mentality and, and everything with the it, whole it's just the different. difference? I mean, it's, just a, it's just a different thing. You still got to be strong. You still got to be in shape. You still got to know how to wrestle. You still got to be tough. Uh, you know, all those things about this sport never never change. Uh, but it's a, it's a little different approach to to where you have to be relative to your weight class. You got to keep it closer, and you got to make sure that weight's under control. And you can't do what kind of the way we did it in the old days, where you can. You can you can dehydrate real quickly and then rehydrate. You can't quite do that as much now with that short time span between weigh-ins and competition. Okay, how many? How often are you home? I come home every week. Yeah, I come home every week, and um, you know, got still got two at home, and uh, want to get home and see Polly and, and uh, Isaac and Jesse. So, uh, and plus, I come home on the weekend. I can watch Jesse play her. She's in a lot of golf tournaments, so I watch her playing golf tournaments. And then you always got things to do in your district, You're meeting folks, giving speeches. You know, doing what politicians do, shaking hands and talking to people. Um, so we, you know, I come home every week, and and I, and I like that. You know, you stay in Washington, you start thinking too much like those folks in Washington who have screwed up the place, spending your money like crazy, and um, so it's always good to come home where normal people hang out. Okay, you say that uh, you said I said, oh, where do you live in Washington? And you said your your office, yeah. and I said literally your office. Well, yeah, I don't I don't uh, typically broadcast that too much, but there's a lot of members who. Um, you just sleep in your office at, 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 at night. You know, you know, got a workout room down in the uh, facility that we work out in. You shower there, and so there's actually a fair number of members who do it that way. Okay, if there's something about uh, Jim Jordan you would like people to know. What would it be? Well, as as, uh, as a member of Congress, uh, I, I, I'd like to think that I'm doing exactly what I told the voters I was going to do, which is go fight for their values, the things they care about, uh, the things that I think make our country great, like protecting life, protecting families, uh, making decisions that I think are in the best interest of families, that key institution in our culture that I believe ultimately determines the strength of our entire society. And that's why I'm the guy who's offered more amendments to reduce spending, offered more amendments to cut taxes than just about anyone in Congress, because I really think that when you think about where we're heading as a country, if we don't get a handle on this spending situation, we're, um, it's really a moral issue. What we're doing to our kids and grandkids, the debt we're leaving them, is just, uh, is just wrong. And it's, it's, it's what, when you think about what makes our country great, it's the idea that parents make sacrifices for their children so that when they grow up, they can have life a little better than we did. And then they, in turn, when they become parents, they do the same thing for their kids. And each generation has done that for the next. It's one of the things that makes us the greatest country ever. When, when you start to spend all the money and leave the debt to the next generation, leave them with the problems, that's when you start to head the wrong direction as a country. And, and that's what we got to get a handle on. That's what I've been working on in Washington. So um, and I, guess, I guess that's what I want people to know about me when I, when I think about what I'm doing for them uh, as a member of Congress. What's harder, being a wrestler or being a politician? 
you know, anything you, you, you try to do well is going to require hard work. What you do, working with kids in the classroom, doing your job here, you know, what, if anyone who's, who's, who's going to do something well, it's going to require a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of hard work. And um, the, good, the good thing is you learn those things in wrestling, and hopefully you can take what you learned on the mat and preparing to compete on the mat, and you can apply it to whatever the good Lord wants you to do. And if you do that, uh, then you can typically, I think, do a pretty good job at whatever, whatever, you know, whatever path that the good Lord sends you down. All right, Jim. Thanks for the time, man. I want to let you, you catch that plane, and I appreciate it.